Welcome back to Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans. I'm Stephen, and today, tonight, whenever the heck you're watching this, we are getting into bourbons I'm looking forward to for 2023. But before we get into this video, please do me that favor, like, comment, and subscribe to this video. But let's get into it. So today, I'm talking about bourbons I'm looking forward to for 2023. And this is a video I'm making in July of 2023. So clearly, you know, we've already gone through half of the year. We've already seen quite a few bourbons and whatnot be released. But now we're getting into that like really, really heavy release period of the year. The second half of the year is always way more intense than the first half. So I went through that breaking bourbon calendar and I kind of looked around, saw what was getting released in that second half, that July onward of 2023. And today I'm going to break down what I really like out of all of those. Some of them, we don't have too much information, but what I do see, I'm really, really intrigued with. But before we get into today's video completely, a word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Z-Biotics. If you're like me and sometimes you struggle doing your daily routine or getting up in the morning and going to the gym, like myself, after a night of enjoying a few bourbons, well, Z-Biotics might just be the answer you're looking for. Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in your gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut where you need it most. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol. Drink responsibly and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Thanks to Zbiotics, I'm no longer skipping the gym after a night of live streaming with you all, so stay prepared for those upcoming summer events and go to Zbiotics and order right now. Go to zbiotics.com forward slash tipsy or scan the QR code right here to receive 15% off when you use the code at checkout, the code tipsy at checkout. Also, you can use that code to sign up for a subscription so you can stay prepared for any of those events you have going on. Zbiotics is also 100% money back guaranteed. So for whatever reason you are unsatisfied, they will refund you, no questions asked. Remember to go to zbiotics.com forward slash tipsy to receive 15% off your first order using the code tipsy at checkout. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this week's episode. Let's get right into it. Starting off with the obvious no brainer BTAC. BTAC, BTAC, BTAC. Of course, BTAC intrigues me. We all know what BTAC is, so I'm not going to get into it. I want a BTAC. I've never bought a bottle of BTAC, so that's basically what it is. So skipping past BTAC, Old Forester 1924. This label has me dumb excited because in case if you didn't notice, I'm a huge Old Forester Brown Foreman fanboy. I freaking love their stuff. So I'm really, really excited about Old Forester 1924. And not only am I excited about it being a 10 year old age stated whiskey, I am super excited about it being on a hundred proof whiskey. A lot of the like 10 year old age stated whiskeys are 90 proof, you know, take Eagle Rare, Russell's 10, uh, Bullet 10, like all good 10 year old age stated whiskeys. But I'm always kind of, I'm a bit of a proof whore. I like proof and whatnot. So I'm always a little bit, lit down when they're not as heavy or spicy or like intense as I'd like them to be. So I'm really excited to see a hundred proof 10 year old Old Forster product come out, especially since my favorite of their Whiskey Row series right now is a Bottled and Bond. So to me, it kind of sounds like an older version of the Bottled and Bond, which really gets me going. And then sticking with that kind of brown foreman um, line, Jack Daniel Single Barrel Barrel Proof Rise. And I know this is primarily a bourbon list. This is the only rye I'm actually bringing up on this list. 
And I know, honestly, these have been kind of released here or there. I've yet to see any in my area. I have seen some people post about them in my area, but I've never seen them. Uh, so unfortunately, I haven't gotten my hands on them. But Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof Rise. They're releasing their Rise in the same manner that they do their uh, Tennessee Whiskey with the Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof Tennessee Whiskey, which is probably one of the best consistent barrel proof bourbons out there on the market so with them releasing the rye i'm really excited and i fully anticipate that that's going to become a consistent everyday shelfer like really reliable amazing barrel proof rye so i'm super excited to see that and get my hands on one of those as well and moving away from brown foreman we're going to get into some barrel products so Barrel has been doing some fantastic stuff and they have two offerings for the rest of this year that I'm really excited for. Barrel Batch 35, it's gonna be like their traditional batch bourbons. You know, this is a 35th rendition of it. They're consistently really, really good. Just like ECBPs, I like to try them or buy them almost every single year just because I've really grown to really like the barrel style of doing things. Again, they are one of the few brands that does good blending with Tennessee whiskey, Dickel. So I really, really like to try their stuff. And another offering they're doing, which this one has me extremely excited, the limited edition for 2023 with barrel is going to be an Amberana cask finished barrel product, which is awesome. So recently I've had a Doc Swenson's um, Amberana finish, the Bossa Nova. Uh, it's gonna probably rank pretty freaking high on you know the best of 2023. And this is probably gonna be about on the same level because I think Barrel and Doc Swenson's are doing fantastic blending and sourcing. And I'm really excited to see how barrel stuff ends up being with that Amberana finish, because again, I'm a little new to the Amberana finish, but I really like that whole cinnamon toast crunch thing that it did to the Doc Swenson's Bossa Nova. And moving to a consistent product or well, a relatively consistent product. I'm sure someone will argue with me in the comments about this, but ECBP C923. C batches are traditionally one of my favorite batches. It's either B or C of every single year. For some reason, the A batch, I just don't care for as much as all the other batches, but it's that B and C batches that I really, really like traditionally. So I'm excited to see what they do with the C batch, especially after all the feedback that uh, they've likely seen from this new B batch with the controversial losing of that 12 year old age statement. I'm really excited to see what they do moving forward with the Elijah Craig Barrow Proofs. Will they bring back the 12 year old age statement? What are they gonna do with it? Because again, some people had problems, some people didn't. I think this one was still good, but not their greatest at all. So maybe their C batch, they're gonna kind of go the other way. Maybe they're gonna age state at 14 years and it's gonna be the greatest one they've ever done. Who knows? cannot wait to find out. I uh, might be a little ambitious thinking of everything I just said, but again, I'm excited to see what the heck happens. And now moving into a brand that's relatively new to me, but is kind of taking the bourbon world by storm, or at least like the bourbon YouTube -y sphere, or like uh, social media sphere. Ben Holiday Ancient Cave Collection. This one has me excited. So Full disclosure, I've never had any of their stuff. That being said, like I said, they are kind of taking the whole social media whiskey industry by storm. I've heard nothing but positive feedback about them, so I cannot wait to get my hands on a bottle of theirs. But this cast collection one they are releasing at the end of this year is going to be a smoked bourbon. A smoked bourbon, which again, I have never had a bourbon that smoked. I've had quite a few smoky whiskeys, peaty scotches, you know, American oak smoked, you know, mesquite smoked. I've had a lot of different smoked whiskeys, but I've never had a smoked bourbon. So I'd be really, really excited to try that as well as just try their stuff in general. Cause again, they've taken the whole bourbon social media world by storm and again nothing but positive feedback so i think they're going to be a brand to definitely watch out for in the near future and after this one lucky seven the colonel brandy finished bourbon honestly this might be the one that excites me the most uh because lucky seven is another brand i've never gotten my hands on a bottle but i've heard nothing but fantastic stuff about so 
I really, really hope I can get my hands on this one. This is like, uh, um, off of memory, it's like 132 proof brandy finished Kentucky bourbon. That is hitting all of the Kentucky bourbon, super high proof brandy finished. I'm in it to win it. And then the brand Lucky 7 to begin with, I've only heard great things about. So I really, really hope I can get my hands on one of these because again, they have been blown it out of the park from what I've heard. So I would love to get my hands on a brandy finish one from them because brandy finish is really, really good. And the last one on this list, uh, this one, I have a little less information than I would like to um, have about it because the TTB paperwork that I was able to pull off the website wasn't super detailed, but little book chapter eight. I've had almost no luck with a lot of the bookers, little books, so on and so forth. Like I usually think they're a wee bit overpriced, but this one, chapter eight is going to be Sherry Finish. I know they do different mash bills and whatnot, so I have no idea what this mash bill is going to be. And again, I wish I could find out more information, just the paperwork I was able to pull up. I'm not finding any sort of detailed descriptions about what's in the mash bill or whatever, but with it being Sherry cast finished, I'm definitely still really intrigued. And I hope maybe just like, you know, Lucky 7 and all the other ones, maybe this will be that first bottle of that that I actually buy because I've never seen them do a finish one off of that, or at least from memory, I don't. So I love to see a good one from them. That being said, this is a wrap for today's video. Please do me that favor, like, comment, and subscribe. That helps us out a ton. Let me know down below on the comments what are some of the bourbons that you're really excited for this year or uh, what is in the near future that you're excited for on release-wise. It can even be craft. Let me know. I'd be excited to hear that. Also, check out the Facebook, Instagram, and the Patreon. Links for all that stuff are down there below. That's a wrap for today's video. Cheers, y'all. We'll see you later.